Hello and welcome back once again to the Pro Tipster Football Show. It's the final round of the Champions League fixtures where the men will finally get sorted from the boys. The cream of the crop rises to the top. I never read a pig because a pig is a cop. That's a hat tip to a House of Pain song. And if you don't know who they are, look them up. Will the British sides bring the pain this week though? That's the question. I'm joined by Pro Tipster Dan to have a chat about what's in store for the final match day of the Champions League in 2017. Pro Tipster Dan, how's it going? I'm well impressed by that House of Pain reference. <laughs> I was just about to burst into song as, as you were saying it. <laughs> Look, we have a ton of matches to get through, and our notes are a bit disorganised. So I'm going to have I'm going to lead you here, right? And what I want to start with is uh, we're going to go through the Tuesday and Wednesday matches. The Tuesday matches uh, we'll start with Group C, where Chelsea are taking on Atletico Madrid. Now Madrid can still qualify. Explain how. Um, okay, so Chelsea need a win to top the group. Atletico can, if they win, they can finish second, but they need Roma to, uh, fall flat in their face against Carabao, which, uh, I'm yeah. not sure is gonna happen. Um, it's a real tough one for Atletico. Chelsea, five wins in a row at Stamford Bridge, scored a bucket load in the Champions League at Stamford Bridge, although six of them were against Carabao. Um, but Atletico, away from home, 15 unbeaten this season, 8 wins, 7 draws, can't really complain about that. And you've got to ask yourself, you know, what kind of team are Chelsea going to put out there? Because they're pretty much assured qualification. Does topping the group mean that much anymore? Yeah, I don't know. That's something I often ask myself when, when, when I'm listening to like other podcasts and that, and reading our articles about Champions League. Like, does it matter if you come top? Because... Like you're still going to be playing a very good team in the in the next round anyway. But it used to matter more when you guarantee that all the best teams were finished top, but you mm. can't do that anymore no. because I don't think we're at a stage now where there are only like three or four good teams in the Champions League. Mm. I think it's much more than that. Mm. And yeah, okay, people say, well, you know, the advantage of playing home second is a good thing. But I'm I'm not convinced about that either. No. I think it's one of those where um you've got to weigh up the difference between how much do you want to win and how much do you want to make sure that your star players don't get injured for the Premier League? Um, you know, Chelsea. Because Chelsea are playing West Ham next. Like, is that, is that a match that they'll really be bothered about or? Um, you'd say that, but West Ham gave Man City a game. Yeah. Um, and I think Chelsea, unlike, uh, Man City, Chelsea are a bit more reliant on players like, on a few players like Eden Hazard, like Alvaro Morata, you know, one of them's two get injured and like Morata gets injured, I don't think Batchway is good enough to step no, up. No chance. So you know, it's like this. This is the kind of um, the kind of thing that Chelsea are going to weigh up. And I, I could quite feasibly see Chelsea playing this no striker formation that they've played before. You know, playing um, William Fabregas and Pedro up front or something mm. like that you know, as the front three. Because although none of them are a striker, it's still a potent front line. Mm. It's like when Ireland only go with James McLean, and you know it's going to be fine. Like. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. Um, Chelsea have only lost twice at home this season, Burnley and, and, and Man City. Overs was priced at evens, which I think is a very good price, since when you consider that Atletico Madrid have to really go for this. Yeah, it was that tip of the day today, was mm. overs 2.5. I think we, we got it a little bit lower than evens, so you can get it evens, definitely. Be, based on the fact that Atletico have got to go for it. And I just see, I, I can see the situation where, was Carabaya, okay, th- th- you know, Azerbaijan league is not exactly the strongest league in the world, but they've played really well. Since Their goalkeeper got, is brilliant. Since, since they got done 6-0 by Chelsea, they've kind of grown and grown mm. in this tournament, and all it's going to take is news of a, a, of a goal against Roma to filter through. And, yeah. You know, it's going to energise the Atletico yeah. players, so yeah. I think Atletico can't afford to be tight at the back. They, they can't, they, they need to go for a goal. Uh, and maybe they'll be, you know, try to be tight at the back, but as they go more and more for a goal, then they, they're going to be more and more open. And I think Chelsea are going to, you know, it's going to play into their sort of advantage because, you know, Ch- Chelsea have got quite a bit of pace to, to strike back at teams. You know, they, this 3-4-3 formation that we're seeing increasingly amount of in the Premier League, I think it's great for it. You know, you've got wide players who get the ball, get forward. Mm. Chelsea especially have got great midfielders. 
So yeah, I, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's gonna be a cracking game. Yeah, I think it's gonna be good. But you, you reckon the table will will finish as it is now? I think. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think Chelsea, Chelsea Roman. Yeah. And I think Roma will, Roma will also win. Um, Chelsea are two point zero three to win, mm. and I thought that was valid to be honest with you because I, I think Chelsea, I think Chelsea are a stronger side than Atletico are. Oh, for sure. But you know, like you know, you always say this in every podcast. You you would have to wait until the teams are, are, are announced. The yeah, lineups. this is true. Mm. Absolutely true. Mm-hmm. Right, we'll move on then. And uh, group, uh, I just want to quick mention this. We won't we won't delve into this one too much. It, it looked interesting on paper because you have in Group D, you have Barca on 11, Juve on 8 points, Sporting on 7. Now you think, okay, that might be exciting, but then you see the Sporting are away to Barcelona, while Juventus are away to Olympiacos. So unless Olympiacos pull off the game of their life, uh, it's probably it's probably Barca and Juve going through, isn't it? Yeah, I would think so. I mean, Juve showed against Napoli at the weekend, they're no mugs away from home. Mm. Olympiacos again, Greek league's not that it's not that strong. Um, I think Olympiacos haven't embarrassed themselves in this tournament, but you you, you would struggle to uh, you would struggle to back against the Juve win there. So uh, I did I did see one interesting sporting uh, stat though. They've only lost once away all season, and that was to Juve. So uh, very good away from home. Man. And Barcelona only going to draw this weekend mm. against was it Leganes? Mm, something like that. Yeah. You know, what's going on in Spanish football? There's yeah. actual competition this year. <laughs> Valencia <laughs> lost as well, which was shocking. Yeah, Valencia lost. But uh, they, were, they had to lose sometime, though. You yeah, know, to get a fight? Yeah. Uh, they're not that bad. Mm. You know? Uh, right, uh, let's move on to Group A, then. This is also a Tuesday match. You have uh, Man United in, uh, there in first and twelfth. Then it's between Basel and Siska Moscow for second place. They're both on nine points. Basel... Uh, sorry, United are at home to Cisco Mos- Moscow and Benfica are hosting uh, Basel. Um, uh, you were looking up team news on this, weren't you, to f- try yeah. and find out? What, the, what did you find out? Okay, so Man United only need a point to qualify. Cheska really need all three. Um, the obvious one is Pogba, because he got sent off at the weekend. Can't play in the Manchester derby, so he will definitely play. Um, Mourinho made a joke, because... Uh, they asked him which keeper would play, and he said, well, my best keeper will, because my, my keeper that plays is always the best keeper, so Romero is the best keeper, and David De Gea is now third. Well, I see. <laughs> it's just, you know, it's Mourinho yeah. taking yeah. the mick a little bit. Um, Ibrahimovic is not fully fit. He's, he's going through intense training with his knee, and Mourinho said that he needs a bit more time, so he's not going to risk him. Um, I think you'll see Luke Shaw maybe at left back instead of Ashley Young. So he'll make a few changes, maybe a surprise. One player that he thinks is unavailable will be available. Yeah. I mean, it was a classic Mourinho press conference. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see Axel Twanzevi get a run. Uh, Mkhitaryan could come back in. Oh, they're friends again now, are they? Well, well, it's like Luke Shaw, isn't it? It's like, this is a game where you, you prove me wrong. You know, yeah. you, you've got a chance to prove me wrong. Show me why you're worth a shirt. Um, which I think is, I think is the right kind of attitude for this kind of, uh, this kind of game. I know it's like, I'll oh, just play the kids, but it's not as simple as that. And Manchester United have got a fairly decent sized squad. Yeah. And Cesc and Moscow are good on the road. They've only, they've only lost twice all season away from home. You know, so they're, they're fairly handy. You know, um, I don't know. But then again, United haven't lost since, when was it, 10th of September 2016. <laughs> a long time since, since they lost at Old Trafford. Uh, Benfica then are hosting Basel. Basel have to go for goals, and I thought that the price of 1.85 was was okay for that. Just because Basel, Basel are going to have to go and just just yeah. just outscore, you know. Uh, Cesc, if if they think that and that happens at Old Trafford, they're just going to have to get a lot of goals. And Benfica, they're just playing for pride. They've been awful, really disappointing in the Champions League. Nobody expected them. To, to be this bad at the start of start of the campaign there's no way anyone would have thought Benfica would have had no points by now thanks for listening to the Pro Tipster football show check out ProTipster.com where you can earn money by sharing your tips and coupons sign up now and get our free daily newsletter where our experts share their tips go to ProTipster.com for more details uh, let's move on to group F um, Man City are playing uh, Shakhtar this is on Wednesday. Um, yeah, so what was Pep saying about this? Well, Pep uh, was talking about how um, he was going to uh, respect the integrity of the competition, respect Napoli, respect 
Shakhtar and play a strong squad. Um, which is fair enough. Uh, only six Champions League teams have ever taken 18 points from, uh, like group stages. So, you know, it's, it's a good statistic to be involved in. And the squad, um, the squad's actually going out to Ukraine for four days. So they're flying out today to Kharkiv, uh, which is where the game will be played. Um, there's only four youngsters in the squad. So you've got the fourth choice keeper, Daniel Grimshaw. Sorry, third choice keeper, Daniel Grimshaw. For this game, you've got the defender Tosin Adarabayo, first time. Well done. <laughs> um, who will? I could see him getting a game at centre back because you know they, they played Mangala at uh, the weekend, and I think Mangala might be on his way out. So you know it's going to give uh, him a run. Phil Foden, seventeen-year-old England wonderkind. Uh, I'd love to see him get a game. I don't know. I don't know if he'll start, but I, I would personally love it to see because you know he's he's what it's all about and. I've got a lot of respect for Pep in that he's, um, he's, he taught, he's talked up Foden. He's talked about how good he is. He gave him his debut in the last Champions League game and I could see him giving him 20, 30 minutes easily in this one. I don't know if we'll start him, but, and then you got Brahim Diaz, who is quite a useful looking attacking player as well. Um, I think a few Man City fans were expecting them to take a load more, but the thing is Man City can rotate their team completely and still have an amazing team out there. Mm. You know, I think Gundogan will start. I think uh, um, Silva's not going, so you know, you, you, I, I think De Bruyne will get rested. But it's you just look at the t- players who are going to come in. It's, it's unreal. Yeah, um, Silva just signed an extension. Did you see that? Yeah, I've got to say, um, going back in time a little bit, David Silva is one of the most skillful players I've ever seen in the flesh. Yeah, it's, a lot of people don't rate him. I, really, I can't understand. That. Me too, man. I don't get it. I saw Man City play uh, my team, Birmingham City, at St Andrews. I mean, this is going back to like when David Silva first came to Man City. We had those flowing locks of hair six, seven years ago, and he was unreal. Mm. He was, and sometimes it's an absolute pleasure to watch a team, even if they're smashing your own. <laughs> it's 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 horrible when you're losing a game and you know you're not that much worse than them, but you're just yeah. playing crap. But when you're playing a team that's on another planet, you're like, well, you know what? Mm. There's no shame in this. You know, I've actually enjoyed it. Mm. I think I remember that being one of the games where I walked away and thought, that was all right. <laughs> um, the other one was in our first season when we lost to Arsenal 4-0, and I remember applauding the third goal because it was that good. Yeah. And, it's like, and this is why. I, I, was a bit, I, was, I, I was a bit critical of Pep last year, but this year I think he's proven what a great manager he is. Yeah, okay, he spent some money, but you, it, it's a real skill to have that many good players and none of them being mad and not playing. Mm. You know, he, he's, um, he talked about how, um, West Ham parked the bus and he had to change things. So he had two wingers and two forwards. He's always looking at what he needs to do to be better. Mm. You know, and this is Man City now who are like occasionally conceding goals and coming back. You know, it, it's the mark of a good team. Mark of a great team is one that can grind out the results even when they're not playing particularly well. And, there was all that furore about Pep uh, when they played Southampton. Yeah, with Nathan Redmond. With Nathan, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and and um, t- to be fair to uh, Redmond, he slated the sun because he said Pep didn't actually say anything bad. He said mm. that he wanted, he was disappointed that I didn't attack them more. And Nathan said, t- so it's like that thing when you're a teenager and and, and your parents they're, they're they're not angry. They're just yeah, they say they say we're not angry. We're just disappointed. I, mean, I, th- I think that what it was, more. was 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 Pep <laughs> wants teams to play open because. Man City find it hard to break down teams. And, yeah. and Nathan Redmond told me, said, look, manager told me I had to play like that. Yeah. Was but it Redmond did the fake, the throw? Was that him as well? I don't no, know. No, 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 that was Bertrand. That was Ryan Bertrand. Ryan Bertrand, that's hilarious. And he looks at the camera and points <laughs> at his watch. It was so funny. Fair play to him. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, he got, he got the, he got the ironic cheers, but like to, to then look at the camera and do the watch thing, you know. <laughs> I love it. I, I, I do love little moments like that. It's like, you remember a couple of years ago, uh, Big Sam uh, made fun of one of the Swansea players for diving. Did you, do you remember that? And oh, Who was it? Was it Nacho Fernandez? Is that his name? Uh, one, of the Swansea, one of the Spanish Swansea players, he, uh, he dived right beside the touchline down where Big Sam is. And Sam just turned around and just went, <laughs> laughed in his face. It was classic. You gotta look it up. I'm not doing it justice at all. Um, Sam, look, Sam was in the news, wasn't he today? Yeah, that's something. Yeah, let, let's get on to it then. Sam, uh, Sam versus Marco Silva. Handbags. Yeah, we talked about this on Friday, didn't we? Like yeah. the old dinosaur managers against the new breed. Um, 
I, I, to be fair to Sam, you've got to take it in context. He was asked a, a question in the press conference, which basically amounted to, are you a stopgap? Are you worried that Marco Silva's going to come in the summer and take your job? And Sam's response was, well, Marco did get Hull City rele- relegated. And, <laughs> you know, with the obvious inference that, you know, the, sorry, the obvious implication that Sam has never been relegated. He's also won how many titles, Sam? But, but, <laughs> yeah, um, well, that was Marco's response. Marco, like, saw it as a bit classless and a bit tax what and said, well, Tell you what, Sam, how was you doing when you were 40 years old, which is how old Marco Silva is? Did you, had you won, you know, a, a, a cup in Portugal, a title with Olympiacos? You know, okay, they went down with Hull last year, but Hull were dreadful. Mm. And he still, you know, kept them in with a chance. And you only have to look at Hull this season to see what a basket case they are. Mm. Um, Manager, managers it, left today, didn't they? Yeah, last night, yeah, yeah, today he quit. It, 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 it was on the cards. It yeah. was on the cards. There's something wrong in the dressing room there. But you've got, you know, Marco Silva, he, he, he's one of these new breed of managers. And it's, it's like you were saying earlier. Um, you know, people complain English managers aren't given a chance. The reason they're not given a chance is because we're too often going back to the same mm. old story. And yeah, yeah I, I get it, you know, like it's too, too much money at stake to risk relegation from the Premier League and, and Sam has a reputation for keeping players, uh, teams up. But even so, you know, there comes a time, Sam's 63 now. Yeah. You know, it, there comes a time when you've got to say, come yeah. on. Yeah. Let's move yeah. on now. I think, I think, uh, yeah, I, I just hope that the championship still, will, will still mostly go with, 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 you know, English and I'd like to see more Irish managers as well in England. But, um, I, I wish they would use that more as a kind of a, I don't want, I don't want to say training, but, but you, you know the point I'm getting at. I wish that, that more people a were kind of promote stone. a stepping stone up from there to the Premier League rather the, than the, just. The problem is there's that much money in the championship now, even. Yeah, I suppose that's you true, know, yeah. I'm, Look at us, um, my team, Bowling City, we took in Harry Redknapp to keep us up last year, and <laughs> he did, and then he spent a, a truckload of money this summer and left us high and dry. Yeah, thanks, Harry. Yeah, um, but we had a, a good young Irish manager at one point, uh, Chris Hutton, mm-hmm. a lot of time for him. So yeah, I would like to see more of it too, but, you know, money yeah. makes the world go round. Yeah, Shane Duffy had a comment on him as well after, after they lost to Liverpool the other day. He was like, yeah, look, it's bad that we lost to, to them. We didn't think we'd lose by this much, but they were brilliant. And he said something like, our confidence won't be rocked that much because, because we've such a great manager, we'll be able to recover from this. I thought that was a fairly interesting thing, thing for him to say. Uh, look, let's get back then to, to, to Group F. Um, there was a price I thought was interesting. The overs for uh, Man City and Shakhtar is 1.81, and it's been in 66% of all Shakhtar Matches and also 66% of all City matches, so it's underpriced. Yeah. There's value here. I'll t- I tell you where I think there's value. Um, that's value, but Mad City is something like 3.2 to win in, sh- in, in Ukraine. Yep. Yep. Um, and yeah, okay, we always talk about, look at the Lions, but the squad shows there's only four kids in it, and one of them's the third choice keeper. Mm. I think there's value in that. Um, I went for um, Mad City plus a half. A 1.68, Man City not to lose. Yeah, yes please. <laughs> <laughs> nice one, very good. Uh, fine order also are taking on Napoli the same night. Napoli can still get there. Uh, Napoli only lost to Shakhtar away, beat them at home. So on goal difference, they would get through if they beat fine uh, because Shakhtar are minus a goal at the moment. Napoli are plus a goal. So, you know, Napoli, Napoli can still scrape through. I hope they do because I don't, I don't want this Napoli team to, just to go out with a whimper already when they've been so good and after losing to Juventus the other night as well Juventus like really their experience really showed against them afraid and Napoli uh, they didn't fully turn up and they were good but they, they couldn't get into they just their, their finishing was terrible in the final third final third sees the Irish person there 33 in a third uh, we'll move on then and um, we'll go to uh, Group E. Liverpool are taking on Spartak Moscow. Uh, Liverpool are leading at the moment. They have nine points. Sevilla have eight. Spartak Moscow six. And Maribor are at the bottom with only two. Um, yeah, man. Liverpool have only lost. The last time they lost was at home was against Palace. It was way back in April. But Spartak are uh, Spartak have only lost once in the previous fifteen uh, games, away, home and away, and that was Seville. So Spartak are fairly handy. Yeah, they're a decent side. Um, 
I can't I can't get why Liverpool are so, Liverpool are priced like one point two four to win, <laughs> which seems ridiculously short to me because like you look at the defense, Matip's out for the next month. Um, Joe Gomez, is he fit or not? Will Will um, Klopp carry on with Emre Chan and uh, Gini Wijnaldum at the back in the back three? Mm. Um, I saw a stat: Klopp has made more changes in the Premier League than any other manager this year. Fifty-four team changes, <laughs> and to be fair, I think a lot of that has been down to injury. Yeah. Um, to give you uh, a comparison, this time last season he was on twenty-four. That's mental. Yeah, it's uh-huh. a lot. Um, so yeah, it's it, for me Liverpool have, 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 like. Salah is—is is there anyone who can stop Mohamed Salah from scoring? Yeah, no. Re- Real Madrid's transfer. <laughs> <laughs> um, did, did you see it? The Egypt manager said no. it uh, over the weekend. He said he—he—he he, he, he let the cat out of the bag. He said uh, it's been confirmed to me that Real Madrid want to sign Salah during the summer. Yeah, that's nuts, huh? Coming out and just saying it. I, I we'll see. Well, I, I think Salah, if he's got any sense, will stay where he is. Because, you know, it, like, moving to Liverpool has, has, has been a big thing. He's the first Egyptian to win, uh, Premier League player of the month. He's, um, he's hugely increased his stuff. Like, he went to Chelsea, he didn't really do much. Went to Italy and was pretty decent. And mm. now, like, he, he's just on fire. Eden Hazard came out the other day and said, um, he was never given a chance. He wasn't given a proper chance at Chelsea. But that, that's a dig in against Mourinho because he hates Mourinho. But it's, it's like Kevin De Bruyne wasn't, and look how good Kevin yeah. De Bruyne is. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, Lukaku. Yeah, you know, exactly, he's yeah. just loads. Um, and with Liverpool, it's always the same story as I was going to say, you know, up front, you know, they'll, they'll play Salah, they'll play Coutinho, Firmino. They've got it going, but at the back. Mm. Oof. And, no, people are on about will you know is Clavan fit? I, I, I'll be like, I'll be hoping not. <laughs> no, I'm not being funny. I maybe may, maybe I'm biased against him, but I just don't think he's good enough. You know, um, Chan and Vinalden look decent. You know, play them and Lovren. If Gomez ain't fit, and you know, I, um, they played uh, Alexander Arnold right wing back. Robertson got a chance at left wing back. I'd like to see him get more game time. So. Um, but yeah, Spartak plus two, one point seven nine. Um, will Liverpool beat them by three? I don't think so. But saying that, I didn't think they'd beat Maribor by three, and they beat them by seven. <laughs> so you know, well, see, that's the thing with Liverpool. Like you, you just even though they're on, they're on a fairly good run and they're scoring lots of goals, they're still there's definitely like since since the Spurs match, they've really got it together and they've been outscoring teams by a couple of goals and all, but. You just know that there's a, there's a mistake coming and they're going to just get hammered. But probably not by Spartak. Like, in the next round, could you imagine them going up against like a PSG or a Bayern Munich or something? Like, it'd just be, uh, it'd be a horror show. Well, they're, they're going to play Karras in goal as well. I don't rate him either. Mm-hmm. But Mignolet isn't much better. I think they do need a keeper. Mm-hmm. There was talk of them after, I think it was Butland. Um, which would, you know, if, if they signed Butler for a lot of money, that would help Birmingham City. So, <laughs> I guess a thumbs up from me. Um, look, yeah, d- d- something I should have mentioned during during the, the Man United stuff. While we're kind of on, on goalies, uh, David De Gea ruined my bet the other day. Um, I had backed Arsenal, and and even this morning when I was getting me, me breakfast, I, I was looking through Google for. Um, you know, previous best goalkeeping performances. And uh, what did he have? I think he had 15 saves. It was something like the Premier League record. I think the closest was, was 12 since the Premier League started. The, and the double save from Lacazette and Sanchez. Yeah. Oh, my it was word. Insane. You know, he was proper Hulk mode. Stat, stat for this weekend. What links um, David De Gea, the hero at Manchester United, with the Benevento goalkeeper... What a legend. Al- Alberto Brignoli, who uh, secured uh, Benevento's first Serie A point. What, which player links those two? Oh, I'll have to think, Dan. But silence uh, silence on podcast isn't a good thing. Um, uh, I don't know, Dan. It has to be some kind of coach. Uh, did, 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 no, did it's, he it's, it's not a coach. coach. No? I don't no. know, Dan. I don't know. Okay, what is it? so the last goalkeeper to score a Serie A goal was on uh, in April 2001. 
was former Manchester United goalkeeper Massimo Taibbi. Well done. Oh, who was stat. shockingly bad at Man U. <laughs> Played four times in the league for him. Was um, dubbed the blind Venetian, which is a brilliant <laughs> pun. A brilliant <laughs> pun. Blind Venetian. That's class. When was this? What period was this? Who, who, um, was, the go- who was the main goalkeeper? Um, he was. They, they brought him in to replace uh, Schmeichel. To replace Schmeichel? Oh, yeah. Well, and, and, you know, big shoes to step into and he just couldn't do it. Um, so who was after him then? Bartes? Um, yeah. Bosnich. Bosnich and Bartes, yeah. Mm-hmm. But there, there was a famous game they played Southampton and he was, he was awful. Is that the, the grey, grey jersey? Uh, I don't think it's the grey jersey game. Um, cause it was, it was, it was, it might have been, I can't remember now, but I can't remember what, what jerseys they were in. I'm just remembering that he let one through his legs and he was really bad. <laughs> and like, he just got slated and that's sure. done. But you remember, do you remember, remember De Gea? De Gea, De Gea was in awful, uh, De Gea's first season, he got awful stick from people as well. But, but, but Fergie knew to stick with him. You know, I think the hair at the moment is probably the best keeper in the world. Yeah, he's immense. He is, but but I I just don't like his hair. I, I can't. It's just like you know, I'm a bit You're old school. Jealous. I'm kind of like, I, no, it's not that I'm jealous. I don't mind being bald. It doesn't bother me at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, it's just uh, you know, I'm a bit old school. Like I think footballers should have footballers' haircuts, like 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 Johnny Giles and Liam Brady. They're footballers' haircuts, not these t- t- top knots, whatever the hell they are. Go away will you. As you probably know, podcasts still grow by word of mouth. Show your support for the Pro Tipster Football Show by telling your football mad friends all about our podcast or by leaving a nice review for us on iTunes. Yeah, Spurs versus... Yeah, okay, so Spurs and Applewell. And all I have written here is... I've just written teams because there's nothing really of interest here for me at all, Dan. Well, Spurs are going to play a second team, obviously. Um... Big question is who's going to play? Um, Lamela, who um, Lamela, Lamela, Lamela. I can't. The guy that did the Rabino, Rabino, (laughs) Rabona. He he drinks Rabina, doing Rabonas. Yeah, yeah. He um, he's back to fitness, but he's not in the Champions League squad, so he can't play, which is a shame because this would be the perfect game for him. Yeah. So there is talk that Tash Tashan. Oakley Booth, I'm just reading my hand right now. To Shan Oakley Booth, 17 year old, Wonder King, born in 2000. Oh, God, I feel old. Um, to Shan, what's his name? Oakley Booth. You, you know this thing where like, uh, uh, you know how like, Sony Spurs players have got double barrel names? Yeah, so you got yeah. like, uh, Carter Vickers, um, is it Cameron Peters? And yeah, there's loads of them. And Such he's a middle class team, aren't they? Yeah, <laughs> so true. Um, yeah, um, Kyle, um, yeah, Kyle Cameron, no, Walker Peters, that's yeah, 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 he should uh-huh. play as well, that's right, because they, they got rid of Kyle Walker, and now they've got Kyle Walker Peters, yeah, strange things, snobs, are snobby names, maybe that's why they're unlikable as a team, yeah, it could mm. be that, no, I've never <laughs> been a fan, no, no, that's the thing, no, like, people who aren't Spurs fans, generally don't like Spurs fans, like, a lot of people can have... I kind of like, ah, oh, yeah, I, no, I'd, I'd like to see them doing all right. But Spurs, no one has that with Spurs. It's a strange thing. Yeah, I, I, I've got to admit, um, maybe it will change with their new stadium. But like, I've been, I went to White Hart Lane once, and it was horrible. Yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 it was uh, a bugger to get to from the underground, and the seats weren't. You know, you're up in, you're up in like the gods, as it were. So like, and I'll, I'll set the scene for you. It was two two, and um, I'm only five ten. And like, he was like, oh, I'm gonna score another one now. Like, 93 minutes. So we're getting ready to go. We're standing on the steps, like, in front of, like, the stairs down to the concourse. Um, my best mate is with me, 6'5". So he can see over people's heads. Sebastian Larson robbed, uh, Dimitar Berbatov and then scored a 35 yard blinder. <laughs> top corner. Everyone's going nuts. I didn't see it. <laughs> um, that's my White Hart Lane story. And, yeah. and then walking back don't to... Don't leave uh, early. Don't leave early. Yeah, don't leave early. Walk, walking back to, uh, or Ian Holloway, shout out. <laughs> Ian Holloway. <laughs> So walking back to the underground and, um, you know, like all these Spurs fans are like, and I'm like, <laughs> grinning like, you know, grinning, but trying to keep my mouth shut so, you know, I don't like get, get the, the five kinds of crap being out of me. <laughs> yeah, um, Deli Alley won't be playing. Um, he's had a bit of a dip in form recently, but I think, Pochettino just wants to take him out of the firing he, line. He hasn't come back properly from that injury. No. I think he was rushed back. No. Sanchez will, though, have to be sent off at the weekend because mm. he can't play, you know, next weekend. So, you know, he's, he's, he's a young defender. Might as well give him another run and just try and yeah. get, 
get. Uh, I saw Spurs fans going, well, it's Applewell, who cares? Like, you know, let, let's just play 11 kids. But I think this is the wrong attitude because Spurs at the moment are in a dip. You know, the Spurs are not their season a little bit. And winning's a habit, you know? Yeah. And yeah, I don't have a, I, I think Pep's going to be right, you know, he's, he's, he's rewarding players, young players who play really well by giving them a chance. But you don't want 11 kids because then it's not a reward. It's, yeah. it's, you know, it's just like, oh, we don't care. Yeah. You know, and so that I think translates through to like youngsters' performance because they're like, well, yeah, okay, I'm getting the first team game, but no one cares. Mm-hmm. Whereas like if it's like a first team, but with a couple of kids sprinkled in, I think, well, yeah, I've made it. Mm-hmm. And the only, you know, the only is on then more, the more then to like raise their performance yeah, to match absolutely. the others, yeah, yeah, yeah. or even to outshine the others. Yeah. So you know, it's I, 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 although I'm a big believer in promoting from within, um, I think you have to do it the right way. And it, like, like you say, so I admire some, like, I've always admired Arsene Wenger for it. I think Pep Guardiola's getting it spot on. Fergie. I hate him, man, you, but I, you mm. could never knock what he did with younger players, but mm. Spurs. And I like Pochettino. So I, I hope Pochettino, you know, he, he's sensible and, you know, he puts out a fairly strong team, but it's a little sprinkling of, like, some of their younger talent, so. Yeah. Uh, no, I, yeah, I definitely agree with you because he had, I mean, you have to get back to winning ways and he, and if they had, if they had a, like a three quarter strength squad and they won two, three nil, then it, it can kick on from there and they could get their season. Look, they're not getting relegated or nothing, but, you know, they were, they were title chasing there for a while and now it's kind of gone off the boil already, you know, I don't know. I'd like to see them, them back in it because they, they, they were, they were very good last season and when, when they're good, they're good. But anyway, look, there's one more, uh, then group in the Champions League, in group G. Uh, surprise of the Champions League this season. The football hipsters team of choice is uh, Besiktas they're on 11 points followed by Porto and Red Bull Salzburg both on 7. What, what am I supposed to call them? Dan? Rising Ball? Rising Ball Sports. Rising Ball Sports Leipzig. But, uh, but I like Red Bull so I don't like calling them Red it's, Bull. It's not, it's not I don't like Red Bull it's, it's not their name they're not amazing yeah, 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 Red yeah. Bull. That's mad. It's funny you call them the, um, the football hipsters because like in our office which uh, for those who don't know obviously most of you guys are listening our, our, there's many Turkish people in our office there's one Besiktas fan who's as happy as Larry right now most of the rest in support either Fenerbahce or Galatasaray uh-huh. there's one Besiktas fan who's and he's around, laughing walking around <laughs> with, a, with a Cheshire cat grin um <laughs> Yeah, but I don't, I don't know how Besiktas have done it this year, but they've been awesome in the Champions League. Mm. It's because they have Ryan Babel. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> and, uh, Negredo from, uh, Negredo was playing with Middlesbrough last season, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah he was. He yeah. was muck for them. Yeah, which yeah. was surprising really, because he was alright for yeah. Man City. Yeah, he was good for City, I really liked him. Um, but, um, like Leipzig, what the hell happened to them this weekend? Yeah. I backed them to win. That that was probably what did it <laughs> against the Hoffenheim team, who Martin saw the week before and said didn't have a clue. Yeah. Hoffenheim smashed them four nil. Yeah. Maybe they maybe they were thinking about this one. Um, like they're strong favourites for this. They're one point three to win. Overs is really low as well. It's one point five six because they if, have to go for this. If season. Leipzig are one point three, I'll be looking at Bishop just in the handicap. Uh, uh, I would say they're probably about plus. Plus half, plus point seven five is around evens. No, it's plus one and a half. Plus one and a half. Yeah, I am all over that baby. Yeah, plus one and a half, one point nine seven. For yeah, Besiktas. I've, wow. Yeah, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Put me down. Put me down for Besiktas plus one and a half, please. <laughs> I haven't seen Pro Tipster Dan this excited since they since they kegged uh since they kegged the what was it the melon beer was that it melon and pint no what no it wasn't the oh. pineapple and melon beer. Uh, or was it the strawberry, uh, the, the um, uh, raspberry milkshake? No, 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 it wasn't that one. Yeah, I think it was that one. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Anyway, that's the last time I've seen it. It's excited. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but Porto, Porto, like the Monaco is an interesting one, isn't it? Like, what, what are they playing at? And will Porto, Porto price the one point three three to win? Like, have Monaco, are Monaco just going to give up? Or I think Monaco have imploded. You know, well, I suppose they can't. They can't actually get into the Europa League anyway. I suppose so. Well, they've imploded. You know, they've lost Mbappe. They've lost um, Bakayoko. Like at the start of the season, it's just they just fell yeah. apart. And I know that Arsenal were about going back in for Thomas Lamar. Is he going to be costing us like ninety million still? Or uh, not now? He's not. <laughs> you know. Um, what else do you want to talk about today, Dan? Yeah, Everton apparently are going to win the Champions League now with Big Sam. 
Um, yeah, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Um, I, I, I have to share with you, I saw a, I saw an image, um, at the weekend of, um, Big Sam and Sammy Lee. And he got, jackass now and then. Like, a jackass, <laughs> he got like a wee man, bam, and, um, Erin McGeeky. And then the next he got Sammy Lee, Sam Allardyce, and who's uh, the other Duncan sh- Ferguson. <laughs> and <it was> <laughs> And all the Everton fans giving Sammy Lee stick because of his Liverpool his connections. Liverpool, yeah, but sure, Sammy Lee has managed more and more teams that are, has, has been assistant manager or more teams than, than Big Sam has, I think. Sammy Lee was assistant to Kenny, Kenny Daglish, I think, as well. Was he there, Roy Evans or something as well? He's been all over the place, that fella. <laughs> like a bike, <laughs> a finish bike. Um, big game yeah. tonight as well. You've forgotten the big game tonight. I haven't forgotten. We spoke about it the other day. Yeah, Birmingham. Do we, we have the draw here in work. Uh, I'm going to go for the draw purely because you've gone for the draw. You, uh, we should explain what we're talking about here. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, so in, in, in work we have a, a daily challenge where we put up a match of the day and we all have to put our names on to what the result would be. A home win, draw, or an away win. Now, usually Wolves, now, if you want to check out Go to the Pro Tipster um, YouTube channel. I've been doing Asian handicap videos. I'm up to video five now. I'll be doing video six tomorrow, the next day. And Wolves are my best team. They've won three times so far on my uh, Asian uh, betting, Asian handicap betting. And uh, yeah, they they meet the filter again this evening. So on that strategy, I'll be backing them. But but like I said to you earlier. Probably at home. I I I I take Birmingham on double chance. Birmingham win or draw. That's what I've gone for. Is plus not point five on the mm. Asian handicap. The reason being, yes, Wolves are oh, gritty teeth. A a far superior team than we are at the moment. But a it's local derby. Stuff and stuff goes out the window. It's going to be um, normally it's a game full of cards, um, punches and all sorts. <laughs> and it's a Monday night game, so it there'll be Punches on the terraces, no doubt as well. They'll be angsty, gritty, and because of that, and and also we play better against teams in the top six mm. of the championship. So my heart is probably overall in my head here, but I don't think we'll lose. Yeah, I think my I kind hope of we too. won't lose. I want, I want Berman to get something here. Well, if you hear a no. wailing and gnashing coming <laughs> from like the, the southern Poland, you know what it is. <laughs> If see. they've run out of pineapple and lemon beer again, <laughs> that's what it is. If you have any betting questions you'd like to ask, don't be shy. Get in touch with Patty, Martin, or Dan on Twitter. Pro Tipster I R L, Pro Tipster E N, or Pro Tipster D A N, or on Facebook at Pro Tipster UK. Did um uh did you hear about Swansea fighting with each other in the dressing room? Yeah, yeah, you mentioned that. Um. Bad times at Swansea. I, I, I know, I know a Swansea fan. He can't believe that Clement's not been sacked yet. Mm. Um, they need to sort something out because they're going to go down if they don't. Um, it's if, a shame because he was he was tipped to be the next bright white hope. Wasn't I, he? I, I'll tell you what. One of their problems is, um, and that's Renato Sanchez. Um, they they signed him on loan from Bayern Munich, yeah, and he's the muck. Well, he, I could have told them he would like. I saw him play for the under twenty ones here in Poland, in the. Um, uh, European champion, under 21 European championship, and he was awful. Yeah. He was awful at Bayern last year, and it's he, just like he was great in Portugal. He went to Bayern, he's just stagnated. Mm. And like so far this season, he's known for a pass to a Carabao Cup <laughs> advertisement <laughs> that was in a remarkably similar looking <laughs> kit. That was a great pass. <laughs> Straight out of play. Wasn't there one last season? Was it? Was Peterborough. It by- huh? Peterborough last season where uh, Peterborough were wearing their away kit which was like luminous green yeah. and um, the the player I can't remember which player it was but he played a perfect pass yeah. to the steward walking the line <laughs> and then there was also one I think it might have been a couple of seasons ago Thiago Alcantara yeah this is the one I'm on pass pass, it to passed the, it to Santa to the yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. that was class um, look we're pretty much finished there's one other thing uh, I want to talk about and you showed this uh, to me in the morning, and this, this is Mark Clattenburg, what his comments about the last season's uh, match at uh, at Stamford Bridge between Chelsea and Spurs when Spurs let the let the title slip and the red mist descended. What did he say, Dan? Well, sorry, it's two seasons ago. So le- it was two, sorry, yeah, it was yeah, the, yeah, of course, uh, yeah, yeah, Leicester won the title. Yeah. He said that um, he kind of he wanted to let Tottenham lose the title themselves. He um, 
And like, when you first hear that, you're like, you're like what? what? <laughs> but then, I actually think he makes sense because what he's, what, what he's kind of saying is, is that he didn't want the headlines to be, Mark Plattenberg cast the Spurs to the title, because he said, I could have sent us three Spurs players. Mm. And he didn't, he just booked nine. And he said, I knew they were losing their rag. He said, and, and I think people don't realise that refs do this. People complain about refs, um, and, you know, how consistent they are, but, I've always felt as long as the ref is the same to both teams, it doesn't matter, you know, if they're if they're strict or not. It's all that matters is consistency to both. Oh yeah, teams. of course, he has to be strict for both. And mm-hmm. you know, if like he goes in and he sees it's a blood and thunder game, and he's like, I could send someone off in three minutes. <laughs> but you know, you've got to think to yourself: is this gonna is is this gonna ruin the game? Mm-hmm. Is this gonna like just make it descend into a farce? Yeah. Sometimes I think as a as a referee, you have got to manage this situation. There was a game, uh, a famous game, uh, West Bromwich Albion, uh, Sheffield United against West Bromwich Albion, the Battle of Bramall Lane. And the game got abandoned uh, after 81 minutes because Sheffield United had seven players on the pitch. <laughs> and the reason it got abandoned was uh, they had two sent off. Um, sorry, no, they had one sent off and then one injured and then another one sent off. And Warnock's like, screw this. We, we, you know, we can't win. We're going to start leaking goals. He was telling all of his players, foul. To get another man sent off and they have to abandon it. Uh, and the ref just gave up. <laughs> and it's like, you can't do that. You yeah. can't do that as a referee, you know. You've got part of the job of a referee of a football match is to be, um, is to command respect. And I think what Clattenburg did, I, I think maybe it's come out in the wrong way, but I think you, I think you have to understand what he's saying is that, you know, Spurs did lose the title for themselves because they were like, they just lost their tempers, but, he had to do the right thing by them and allow them to do so. Like, I mean, he, he would have told them before they go, you know, they, they, they normally, you know, say to the captains, like, you, you ain't doing that, son. Hmm. You know, you know, I know it's going to be a, a heavy game. I know there's going to be challenges, but that's where the line is. But, you know, you can't, you can't just like, just whistle, red card all the time. It just ruins it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you know, yeah. and I, I, I think it, it, it's being cute almost. Mm. I mean, Clattenburg's obviously not a ref anymore in the Premier League. He's now head of refereeing in Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. Where I guess if he messes up, they'll behead him. <laughs> uh, apologies to our Saudi Arabia <laughs> listeners who are obviously listening on a VPN because if they get caught listening to this podcast, they'll get beheaded too. <laughs> I, I, I miss him as a ref. I think, I think he's a really good referee and, uh, yeah, I was surprised that, that, that he sold out. But then again, why wouldn't he sell out? I'd sell out for that type, that type of money. Why wouldn't I? To be honest, you being know? a ref is the thankless task anyway, yeah. so you know, he might as well make the most of it. Exactly, you know. So good luck to him. Right, look, uh, I think we'll finish up there. So, Dan, uh, just tell us, Dan, where people can find you on the internet, please. Swipe right on Tinder. Hey. That joke never gets old. <laughs> uh, you can find me on Twitter, ProTips to Dan, all one word, or, on, or at Facebook.com slash ProTips to Dan, all one word. Uh, where I'll post my tips. Uh, don't blame me if they lose. Um, <laughs> who, else can... we gonna, who else are they going to blame? <laughs> dodgy refs, dodgy <laughs> players. Um, and you can also join our Facebook groups where we'll, we'll, we chat about well, what we're backing. For example, uh, discussion today was, am I ruled by my head or my heart when I back Birmingham City plus 0.5? Get involved. Tell us who your tips are because, you know, I'd love to hear them. Yep, and you can follow me on Twitter as well, Pro Tipster IRL. Um, look, thanks everyone for listening. You can subscribe to the Pro Tipster Football Show on iTunes or on Android podcast apps. We recommend Stitcher or Player FM. You can also listen on the ProTipster.com blog as well. So give us a like, a subscribe, a thumbs up, or just some good old karma. Make sure and check out ProTipster.com for some amazing football tips. And subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily tips videos, previews, strategy videos and podcasts. We'll be back on Thursday with our Premier League and European football preview. So for me and Dan, good luck and enjoy the football. Thanks for listening, everybody. Don't forget to check out ProTipster.com, where you can earn money by sharing winning football tips. Check us out on YouTube and Instagram. Our handles there are ProTipsterGlobal. Or get in touch on Twitter, ProTipsterEN or Pro Tips or IRL. Bye.